Hello everybody, this is Money Mom. Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you guys about how some of my money habits kept me broke. Let me get into it and talk to you guys. The sad thing is that some of these things are things from not that long ago. So I'm going to start with number one. The first one is, this one is from a long time ago and I put a kibosh on this one in my 20s. But when I was in my 20s, I got offered all these charge cards, and I took it up on every one of them. I remember when I had a Dillard's, a Foley's, and a Lord & Taylor charge card, and I charged them to the max by buying all these fabulous, cute clothes back then. And I didn't realize, and I was on a small teacher salary at the time, and working in a private school, and I wasn't making a lot of money. And then it got to the point where I wasn't even able to pay the minimum payment. I thought, what am I going to do? I know I've shared this before with you guys. I met with a guy at the church that I was going to at the time, and he sat down with me, and he showed me how much I was actually paying for those clothes and how much interest. I had no idea. And so basically, he said, on your small income, you're not going to be able to pay these off. I went, and I think I told you guys this a long time ago. I got a part-time job at Sally's Beauty Supply, and for one year, I worked weeknights and weekends and worked a full-time job and used all that entire money and paid off all the credit cards and never went into credit card debt again. But it's so easy to use the credit cards and not pay the complete balance because you've got the card right there. So that was a bad habit, but luckily I put that one to rest quickly. Number two, and this is probably my biggest mistake. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna share a quick story about it that a guy just shared with me because I met a guy at Aldi who's 62, who is, was an engineer, and he just retired. I want to tell you what happened when he was leaving the office. Um, not starting investing soon enough and not putting enough to invest into the market. Uh, because you know what? I grew up in the time where in the 1970s, you know, growing up, my dad and all of our neighbors, they all had pensions. And so they didn't have to worry about investing because they had a pension. Well... Um, I don't have any jobs with pensions, so uh, that, you know, I didn't start investing soon enough. And as a matter of fact, this guy that I met told me when he was leaving the office, there were several guys in their late 50s that said, I really wish I would have started investing in the market sooner because I don't know when I'm going to be able to retire. So that, if I could tell any young person this, and as a matter of fact, I told a 19-year-old this today, Start investing early. Everybody, not everyone does the market. Everybody may have something different, but start investing early. Number three, not saving. I basically, which brings me, to, well, actually all of this is together. What I would do is I always paid my bills. I never was behind on any bill. So as soon as I got my paycheck, I paid all my bills. But I didn't, and then, but I would spend everything else besides my bills. I used all the rest of the money. I didn't take any portion of that money and set it aside in any kind of emergency fund. Now, granted, at that time I was single, I didn't have a vehicle, and I lived in an apartment, but I didn't set aside money. And as a matter of fact, I remember one of the jobs that I had when I was working at this daycare when I moved to Dallas, they closed the daycare. I didn't have a job, and my parents helped me out. This is when I was 23 because I didn't have money. And the reason I didn't have money was because I wasn't saving any. I used my entire paycheck. I could have afforded to save at least $50 or $100 or something, and I didn't do that. So not saving anything, using my entire paycheck. Number four, I would overspend on holidays, and I'd want to do them up big, and I'd buy, you know, spend a lot of money on gifts. Number five, basically people-pleasing and not saying no. And I want to ask you guys this. How many of us have been invited to a party, it doesn't matter what kind, where they sell items, but you felt obligated to go, but you didn't really need anything, but you're like, well, I'll go, and just to show my support, I'll buy one thing that I don't need, right? Or some of your friend's kids are selling candy bars or things for their school. You don't want it, you don't need it, and but you feel obligated to help somebody out. So basically, people-pleasing and being afraid to say no, which brings me to number six. That's how I got some of my auto ships from different people because I felt like I needed to buy things to help other people out. But it was things that I didn't really need all that much or desire all that much. Now, if you want to buy something to help out a friend but it's something you really love, go for it. 
but how many times is it something we really need and want? And number seven, buying something just because it's on sale. Can I get a hello to that one? These are just seven ways of big mistakes that I've made over the years. I'd love to know from you guys. Share with me some of your biggest financial blunders, whether it's your 20s, 30s, 40s, and are you making some of these now? I will admit that I still do a few of these, but I've learned a lot along the way. Can't change the past, but all we can do is move forward and make better choices for our future. That's all I have to say. I love you. I appreciate you. And like always, I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.